People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck, reporting live again from Bangkok. Baby, welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show, bringing to you today some more Dale Carnegie, the art of public speaking, and some things that you could actually relate over to your TEDx, because a lot of people, they always say, you know what, you're going to have to show visuals to keep an audience awake. You're going to have to do a lot of things in terms of keeping the audience awake, but you know what? If you actually just speak with conviction and with eloquence, eloquence is basically thought on fire. If you can do this during your speech, people can see that. They can sense that. They can feel that. And with that being said, going through the majority of your presentation, it's just going to be a breeze. See, it's just like, you know, I used to have a sociology professor, right? And he could stand up in front of the classroom and talk for two hours, and people would go to sleep. I remember I watched some TEDx's. Now, again, no no disrespect to those people from, you know, from Britain and from England and all that. But some of them speak in monotone. A lot of them speak in monotone. Uh, The majority of them speak in monotone. And when you speak in monotone, my attention deviates from everything. There was one guy that spoke in monotone. And he didn't, he wasn't even properly dressed. He had a weird, awkward stance. I don't care if you're, you're, you're telling jokes. I don't care if you're doing this or that. I'm turned off. There's a lot of things that will grasp the attention of the audience. And there's a lot of things, there's probably more things that, you know what, the audience could just say, you know what, I'm finished. And so, if you look at Les Brown. Les Brown, if you actually look up Les Brown on YouTube and look at the ways he used to actually give presentations and stuff compared to, to, uh, you know, compared to today, it's much different. He used to speak, well, obviously he's a little bit older now, you know, compared to what he was 25 years ago. But when he used to spoke, speak in the early 90s, it was amazing because he spoke with so much passion, conviction, conviction. I could literally go through 45 minutes of watching this man compared to, you know, him speaking now because he doesn't have that sort of fiery passion within him anymore. You know what I mean? And obviously this comes with old age and stuff like that. Another person, but well, I can't say it comes with old age because if you look at Bob Proctor, he's a couple years over the age of 80. And what he says, he also says... With a lot of passion. And so I love it. But then again, if we actually, you know, put our attention towards Jack Canfield and him giving his seminars, that's another person that I cannot watch fully because he kind of speaks in monotone. So, again, I like it because what Dale Carnegie said, he he talked about a man named Sherman Rogers, right? And the thing is, he had to speak with uh, Sherman Rogers a long time ago, right? I'm not even going to tell you who Sherman Rogers is right now. But you know what? Uh, What is it? Dale Carnegie said, you know what? If I had a good excuse, I would have left immediately before he even got on stage. Because he was built as a lumberjack orator, okay? Uh, A person of bore, I guess you could say. And you know what's crazy? All these preconceptions that he actually had of Mr. Sherman, they weren't true. You know what? It's crazy. Mr. Rogers ended up making one of the best talks he has ever heard. And who is Sherman Rogers? Well, you know what? He's just a lumberjack. He worked most of his life in the big woods of the West. He knows nothing and can care less about everything else in the rules, you know, in terms of the rules of public speaking. And... His talk did not have polish, it did, but it had a punch. It lacked finesse, but it had fire. He made grammatical errors and did a half a dozen things wrong, but it is not faults that kill a talk. It is a lack of virtue. See, his speech was a huge raw piece of palpitating experience. This is what Dale Carnegie said in his book. And it's crazy because he he tore it right out of his life as a a laborer and a boss of laborers, okay? So depending on what he's talking about, he could talk about, you know, how underpaid some laborers are. Depending on what he was talking about at that specific moment, he was talking with such a fiery passion. It 
it, it's crazy. It crouched and it sprang up to you. Everything he said leaped flaming hot from his heart. And it's crazy because it had a wonderful effect on the audience. There was William Jennings Bryan. Remember, I told you, eloquence is thought on fire. And you know what? Over 2,000 years ago, there was a Latin poet, right? He actually expressed his thought when he said, If you would draw tears from others' eyes, yourself, the signs of grief must show. You got to hear it from you. See, this is when I heard Lisa Nichols on the Steve Harvey show. I immediately and the audience immediately began to weep because of her story. And why? You know what? They need to see that grief within you and you need to express it outward. And when you do this, depending on what you're talking about, if you're not trying to give an emotional speech or whatnot, there are a lot of different ways and techniques to deliver speeches. Yes, but at the same time, Lisa Nichols... Ray Lewis, especially Ray Lewis, when they talk about their lives, I'm glued in. It's amazing because they speak with so much passion. It's almost like preaching. Martin Luther King once said, if I wish to compose or write or pray or preach well, I must be angry. Then all the blood in my veins is stirred and my understanding is sharpened. Even a horse is affected by a spirited talk, okay? A famous animal trainer once said that he had known an angry word to raise the pulse of a horse. 10 beats per minute. Of course, surely an audience is as sensitive as a horse, right? This is the most important fact to remember, people. Every time we speak, we determine the attitude of those who hear us, all right? So we hold them in our hands. And if we're lackadaisical, They will be lackadaisical. If we are reserved, they will be reserved. If we are only mildly concerned, they will only be mildly concerned. Do you understand where I'm going with this? But if we are deadly in earnest about what we say, and if we say it with feeling and spontaneity and force and that contagious conviction, they cannot keep from catching our spirit to a degree. Because audiences, people, human beings, they're moved by emotion. Regardless of whether the speaker's subject is of a personal concern or a national issue, he or she must be really deeply convinced that it has meaning for you in order for the speech to excite you. Remember, I talk about relating to the audiences. It won't matter how his or her conventions are clothed, okay? But only with what sincerity and emotional power they actually launch at you. Passion, feeling, spirit, emotional sincerity, having these qualities in your talk and your auditors, they will actually, you know what, it's it's crazy because a lot of people would probably say, oh, he's too passionate. I've seen speeches uh, given by legislat- uh, legislators where he was just too passionate. It was one of the worst speeches I've ever seen. Now, I'm not saying go up there and scream. No, I'm talking about Literally speaking with a controlled rage. Because you know what? Lincoln actually spoke with an unpleasantly high tone. Some of the most prominent and successful speakers had weak voices. They stammered, they stuttered, or even swallowed their words. Yet they had an earnestness about them that triumphed all over the defects. It blasted all those handicaps. So what I'm trying to say today In terms of your speaking, if you just go up there and you just talk, people aren't going to be glued in. I've seen this in a lot of TEDx talks, one of them being Praya. She's a famous Thai actress. She gave gave one at one of the international schools in Bangkok. She had a couple of papers in her hand, which probably wasn't the best. Yes, she did show a couple of things on the projector and whatnot, but she she was talking about how the community at NIST was amazing. But she could have did a hell of a lot better job, especially after being there myself and seeing how that international school is. If she could have spoke with a little bit more passion, people would have been awake. But you know what? There was no respondents in the audience. There was no one laughing. There was no one in with the attention. People were on their phones. People, their attention span was gone because she was literally talking rather than giving. And when you start giving and when you start Speaking with that sort of conviction, 
that you're saying, hey, listen, I'm very passionate about what I have to say today. So I'm going to get this point across. And you guys are going to feel this energy coming out of me. See, that's why I love Michael Bernard Beckwith. He is in sync. He is in perfect harmony with the laws when he gives his speeches. It's like a preach, an ongoing preach. So every word he says and the tones he goes up and down with is remarkable. So if you guys actually want to look up some of these speakers who I've just mentioned, Michael Bernard Beckwith, Lisa Nichols, Les Brown, even you could check out Tony Robbins, but Tony Robbins speaks very, very fast. He says a lot that I want to take in, but I can't. I can't write anything down because at that given point, he's already gone on to another idea that's even more important. So it's just pure mayhem. So there are some speakers that speak in monotone, especially a lot of British ones. I'm talking about Jack Canfield. Those are the type of things where I'm just like, okay, you can actually speak with a little bit more passion and get the audience's attention, regardless if you're throwing out, uh, what is it, visual aids, you're doing a demo, you're using humor. Speak from the heart. And when you speak from the heart, people will realize that and they will applaud you. So with that being said, it's a short, short podcast in terms of you know, keeping your audience tuned in. And I'm going to be getting into some real good stuff. I need to do a little bit more Dale Carnegie. And yes, Napoleon Hill in terms of habit, that's coming up also. So you guys stay tuned for that. My my throat's a little bit sore today, so I need to go to like the doctor and get some damn meds or something like that. Luckily, no more symptoms. But anyways, that's why I probably sound a little bit weird today if you guys are probably wondering, hey, your voice is a little bit off. Yeah, you know what? And it's not going to stop me from doing my damn podcast. So with that being said, people, if you have any questions, you know how to get in contact with me. Welcome to the party. There's a town somewhere in Illinois. I forgot where, but it's a small town in Illinois. Welcome to the party. It starts with the I, I think. I forgot. I completely forgot, but I just want to say welcome to the party for all those people who are listening and tune in to this podcast, especially people in Asia, especially the people in South America, everywhere around the world. You got any questions, fire them off. And until then, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual, over and out.